Who would have thought that this young and beautiful lady is actually a Chinese version chainsaw killer? Her calm and composed demeanor when she murdered is something you absolutely can't imagine. So, what terrible things has she done? Welcome to today's episode of The Other Truth. Tag your friends and watch together. Let's travel back to April 7, 2012. On this evening, the police of Jiangxi Province, China, received a report. The person who reports said that, after his family left at noon, they haven't come back until late at night. He can't reach them either. He feels something must have happened. Although it hasn't been 24 hours, the police, based on the description of the person who report, also feel that there must be something suspicious. The woman is Li, who went missing. A few years ago, she bought a clothing store in Jiangxi Province, China. On this day, April 7th, she came to the store as usual, but she didn't come home late at night. Later, the police immediately rushed to Li's clothing store to conduct an investigation. The police found the door of the clothing store was not locked. No one inside to find Li's whereabouts as soon as possible. The police immediately accessed the nearby surveillance. Soon, the police found Li's. She appeared in the surveillance of a nearby hotel, although the family reported it late at night. According to the surveillance, Lee actually left the clothing store at noon and never came back. The surveillance shows that day at 11.39 a.m., Lee walked into a convenient hotel 150 meters away from the clothing store, approaching a young woman waiting in the hotel. Then they sat together and started talking. About five minutes later, Lee followed the woman, and they entered room 8607 together. After they entered the room, the young woman was seen entering and exiting the room a few times, but it wasn't until 8 p.m. that the room was checked out. Lee never appeared again. Then. A man walked out together with the woman, carrying a backpack on his back, while also holding a suitcase in his hand. You guys must have guessed what's inside. This gave the police an ominous premonition. Where did Lee go? Is she still in the room? And who are the young woman? And the man in the surveillance? What happened in the room 8607? What exactly happened? Room 8607 is empty, no sign of Lee, and because it has been cleaned by the staff, at a glance, there's even no trace of this woman. But did nothing really leave behind? Subsequently, the criminal investigation police conducted a thorough examination. After careful examination, the police found bloodstains on the wallpaper. A segment of surveillance footage became the last image of Lee in this world. Those few suspicious bloodstains gave everyone an ominous feeling. We all collected the bloodstain, and we conduct a simple analysis. The DNA result shows that it was belonged to the deceased. It should be a case where the boss who was murdered. To find useful clues, the police repeatedly watched the surveillance footage and found an intriguing detail. They knocked on the door before entering, indicating that there was someone inside. Fifteen minutes after Lee entered the room, the young woman left with a lady's bag. Sixteen minutes later, she came back, this time dragging a suitcase in her hand. The police inferred Lee may have been murdered and then transferred using the suitcase. If the inference is correct, the young woman who left the room is to went out to buy the suitcase. At that point, Lee should have already been murdered. In other words, the tragedy occurred from the moment Lee entered to the young woman leaving in just a short 15 minutes, a very short period of time, plus the young woman's natural behavior when leaving. The police speculate they should have planned it for a long time. After buying the suitcase, the young woman stayed in the room for about an hour. The corridor was empty. Few people passed by. What exactly happened inside the room of 8607? It was unimaginable. After 1 p.m. in the afternoon, more than an hour after Lee entered, the young woman walked out of the room again and returned hastily after 10 minutes. But this time, 
She was holding a bag in both hands. As we saw the bag, a thought flashed that it might be a chainsaw, and the shape I saw also looked like a chainsaw. After the woman carried the chainsaw inside, what would she do in there? Two hours later, the young woman walked out of the room for the third time. This time, she brought back a backpack. After that, room 8607 remained closed until around 8 p.m. The young woman finally came out of the room, surprisingly. At this time, the person who came out with her was not Lee, but a tall man. This man should be the man who opened the door for them to enter just now. If Lee has been murdered, then this couple were undoubtedly have high suspicion. The task force immediately investigated their identities from Lee entering the hotel until the pair left. Approximately eight hours passed. During these eight hours, what exactly happened? What kind of relationship exists among these three individuals? What kind of hatred would drive them to treat Lee so cruelly? Because when we look at the girl, she looks very delicate and doesn't seem very old. Throughout the process, she appears calm in the video, without the fidgety feeling. According to the room registration records, the person who checked into room 8607 is a young man named Zhao Si. Subsequently, the police found out through investigation. Zhao Si is only 18 years old. He is an unemployed with a relatively weak physique, which doesn't match the man in the surveillance footage. So, could he be the man in the surveillance footage? To not miss any clues, technical police once again surveyed room 8607. This time, technical police found another blood stain in a corner of the room. Unlike the previous discovery, this blood stain was not left by Lee. The police judged this is very likely left by the murderer. Considering the murderer's extremely skilled methods, not only would they logically cover up, but their demeanor would also be quite calm. These two suspects likely have criminal record, and the new blood discovered was compared in the police's DNA database. Soon, a man named Ali got the police attention. After the investigation revealed that Ali is 34 years old, he is an unemployed due to lack of stable income. He often engages in stealing, and his physical features are quite similar to the man in the surveillance footage. Furthermore, the police also discovered that Ali, about a week before the incident, he had once stayed in room 8607. Subsequently, the police found Ali. According to him, he indeed stayed at that hotel. He remembers that day when cutting fruits. He accidentally hurt his hands, but as for the specific room number, he couldn't recall. So, is what he said believable? Could it be a premeditated lie? So where was he on the day of the incident? This is how he explained it. He said on the day of the incident, he played cards with friends all afternoon. Subsequently, the police found his friends to verify. They confirmed it was true, and Ollie is known to be very addicted to gambling. Other than going to the restroom, he never leaves the poker table. Therefore, Ali was ruled out as a suspect. In the subsequent investigation, the police learned that Lee had a boyfriend named Ding, and they had been living together for seven years. Ding is a general manager of a company, earning a good stable income. He is 15 years older than Lee and treated Lee very well. He also invested in the clothing store. What was particularly unusual was the female owner of the clothing store and her boyfriend had been living together for many years, but never get married. As the investigation deepened, it was discovered. The reason they hadn't married was Ding had his own family. Could this be a relationship vengeance in this? Another note with the detail is on the night of the incident, just half an hour before Lee, left the clothing store. She received a call from Ding. So, could Lee hurriedly rush to the hotel related to Ding? But after a comparison, it was found. Ding physique and the man in the surveillance footage differ significantly. Clearly, they are not the same person. But when investigating Ding's financial situation, the police discovered that before and after the incident, he had sent money several times to a same account. 
claiming each time it was over 50,000 yuans. Could he be involved in a premeditated murder? Subsequently, the police conducted visits and investigations around Ding and Li's relatives and friends. Li has a brother and Ding treated their family very well. In public opinion, they are already considered a married couple and they lives like a couple since their relationship is so good and they have been living together for seven years. Why hasn't Ding divorced with his wife? And why hasn't he married Li? After further investigation, it was revealed that Ding relationship with his wife had broken down many years ago. But due to their son's emotional instability at the time, the two, for the sake of their son, had not processed the divorce proceedings. And on the morning before the murder happened, he called Li, was simply to invite her for lunch. As for the money transfers during that period, it was for a business friend who had a sudden financial problem and needed to borrow money. This was later confirmed. At this point, suspicions of Ding hiring someone to commit murder were ruled out. The couple in the surveillance footage used Zhao Xi's ID to book the room, and Zhao Xi had disappeared after the incident. At this moment, a plainclothes police who had been waiting outside his house saw Zhao Xi return as if nothing had happened. What's your name? Me. I'm Xiao Xi. Where is your ID? I've lent it to my friend. Which friend? According to him, he went out of town for a few days. Before leaving, a friend borrowed his ID. That friend is named Wang. Subsequently, the police had him identify the couple in the surveillance. At a glance, he recognized his friend Wang, but he didn't recognize the man in the surveillance footage. Wang is only 18 years old this year and still a student. So, who is the man with her? After investigating Huang's connections, they quickly identified another suspect. This person is named Kong. At the time of the incident, he was 26 years old. He is not from this city. Subsequently, the police decided to arrest them immediately. On the morning of April 9, 2012, the police in a hotel in Nanchang arrested both suspects faced with irrefutable evidence. They admitted to their criminal acts and confessed to conceal the crime of killing Lee. They threw the suitcase containing Lee's body parts into a lake. After three days, the suitcase was finally retrieved. Facing this black suitcase, everyone in the task force felt extremely heavy-hearted. Let's us go back to the crime. The body had been found. So why did the young Huang follow Kong to commit such a heinous act? Originally, Huang's father passed away in his early years. For these years, she has depended on her mother. After going to vocational school, she stayed in the school dormitory and then met Kong while traveling. Perhaps due to the lack of paternal love, Huang, who was weak since childhood, longed to be loved. Kong, appearing in her life, showed care and love, instantly captured Huang's heart. From then on, they entered into a romantic relationship. While Kong, at the time of the incident, was 26 years old, a graduate of a university. Right after graduation, his parents bought him a nearly million dollar house in the city. In early 2012, he married Tu Wang. The newlyweds were very happy. So, what kind of hatred led him to kill Li? She said, I need to increase the shop rental. And I consider a while. I unable to continue the business if the rental increase in invested 10,000 to the business and I lose it all. So this seemingly unbelievable massacre started just because of a rental increase. According to Kong, two years ago, he rented a space from Lee to start a comic store, but Lee kept causing trouble for him. So he decided to terminate the lease. But after I said, I agree to the increase of rental and ask if I able to sub rent the shop, but she said no, involving the transfer fee. Kong and Lee were unable to come to a conclusion, but in the end, Kong gave up 
because with his family's economic condition, he didn't care about that small amount of money at all. A year later, as he passed by this clothing store and saw the sub-rent notice again, the anger in his heart was ignited again. He decided that he must teach this woman a lesson. Enough is enough. I have tried my best, compromised repeatedly, and talked nicely to her. End up she lie and cheat me. So he had his lover, Wang, use renting as a reason to lure Li to a hotel and brutally killed her. Thus, the process of how Li, the owner of the clothing store, was killed has been revealed. The truth is now clear. On May 9, 2013, the People's Court of Jiangxi Province, China, in the first trial, the suspect Kong was sentenced to death, and the suspect Huang was sentenced to seven years imprisonment. That's all for today's episode. We will see you in the next video.